Hello again. Welcome back to Eclipse and Java for Total Beginners. At this point, we have our classes coded, and because we've written them using test-driven development, we can have a high degree of confidence that they will work as designed. But so far, we've only run our My Library, Person, and Book classes from our test classes using the Run As JUnit test. In this lesson, we will create a standalone program that can use our classes to create and modify a MyLibrary object. Now when we run our classes directly, the Java Runtime Engine needs to know what to do after the classes are loaded. In other words, how to start the program. In Java, we create a special method called main in one of our classes. The Runtime Engine then knows to start the program execution by running this main method. Now if we had time to write a full graphical user interface for our classes, our main method could just present the user with menus and forms and then let the user do whatever they wanted. Writing a graphical user interface is beyond the scope of this tutorial. Instead, our main method will simulate a simple set of user actions and then print information about the contents of the My Library to the system console. Now once we have this working inside Eclipse, we'll use Eclipse's export wizard to create a standalone version of our program called a JAR file that can be run on any computer that runs Java. So let's get started. We can create the main method in any of our classes. Let's put it in the My Library class. So we'll come here and open up the My Library class. Again, we'll go to the end, being very careful about our curly braces. And if we type the word main and hit control space, it offers to make a main method for us. Now, the main method is a static method, and it's void, and it takes as its parameter an array, a string array, called args. This allows a Java program to read parameters from the command line. Our example won't use any command line parameters. So we'll start with a comment. We're going to create a new My Library. So we'll use new and code assist My Library. We'll call it test library. And we'll give it a name test drive library. Create some space. Now we're going to create some new books. Book B1 will be War and Peace. And book B2 will be Great Expectations. And we'll set the author of Book B1 to Tolstoy. And for B2, we'll set the author to Dickens. Next, we'll create some people. So, person, Jim, equals new person. Person, Sue, equals new person. And then we're going to set the name. So, we'll say Jim, set name to Jim. Sue dot set name to Sue. Next we're going to print out some text to the console and we're going to learn a little trick. So if we put in the text first, just created new library in quotes, and then we select that text with the mouse, hit control space, and then the up arrow and enter, then Eclipse puts in the system out println command for us. Now next we're going to create a method called print status we're going to invoke a method called print status. We're going to write it in a few minutes. And it's just going to print out a bunch of information about the current status of the library. So we'll write the method later. So again, we're going to use our trick. We're going to say check out war and peace to sue. We're going to highlight control space and then the up arrow enter and it'll print that out to the system console. 
So now we're going to check out book B1 to Sue. So testlibrary.checkout B1 to Sue. Then we're going to invoke our print status method again so we can see what the library looks like at this point. Then we're going to print out a message, do some more stuff. So we'll highlight that, control space up arrow, and that'll print out to the console. So now we're going to check in book B1, and then we'll check out book B2 to Jim, and one more time we'll invoke the print status method. We'll save, and then we're going to use uh, quick fix to create the method, the print status method. Then we'll go down and start working on that method. So we'll delete the comment, and then we're going to type a string, status report, my library, and then a backslash n is just a new line. And then we can go plus this dot to string, and if we highlight that whole thing, we can still use our trick of control space up arrow, and it'll print out that whole thing to the system console. Now we're going to do a for each loop, and we're going to loop through each book in the this get books. And then here we're going to just say this book, highlight it, and print that out to the system console. So when we put an object in as an argument to the system out println command, that command automatically invokes the two string method on the object. So it's just like putting this book to string. So next, we're going to do a for each loop, and we're going to loop through all the person objects in this dot get people. For each one, we're going to set up int count equals this dot get books for person p dot size. So we're going to see how many books each person has checked out. So we're going to print out p, which will do the p dot to string, and then the literal has, and then count, which is number of books of my books. And then we're going to highlight the whole thing, control space up arrow, and that'll print it out to the system console. So we're going to create some space, come out of the for loop, then we're going to do a constant books available colon plus this dot get available books dot size. So to get the number of available books, highlight control space up arrow, print that out. And then one last line, we're just going to put out a constant saying end of status report. And again, highlight control space up arrow, print to this console. We'll save and we're done. At this point, we have our main method written and we have our print status method written. Let's try running our my library class. So notice we're on my library and now we can go run, run as, and we can run it as a Java application and let's see what happens. Well, it ran and it gave us output in the console, but we have a problem. We're not showing any books or any people in our library. So let's see what happened here. Go back up here. And if we look up here where we built our test case, we created our person and our book objects, but we forgot to add them to the library. So we can fix that pretty easily. So we'll go test library dot add book b1. And then we'll copy this line, paste it, and change it to b2. Then we need test library add person Jim. And then again, we'll copy that line, change Jim to Sue, 
and we'll save. Now we'll try run again, run as Java application. And now our output looks a little better. We have two books, two people, and neither one of them are checked out. And that's the end of the first status report. Then we check out War and Peace to Sue. And now Sue has one of my books and one is available. And it shows War and Peace checked out to Sue. And we do some more stuff. And again, this looks like it's what we want. At this point, we've got a working program that we can run from inside Eclipse. Now let's create a standalone program that can be run outside of Eclipse on any Java compatible system. To do that, we select File, Export, and we select Java, Jar File. And if you remember, when we created our test classes, we put them in a separate folder called Test. And one reason to do that is to make it easy to exclude the test classes when you're going to create a JAR file. So we're only going to select the normal source classes and, and exclude the test classes. Then we need to give the JAR file a name. I'm going to put it in the same folder that we've got our workspace in, and we'll just call it My Library. Then we'll hit Next. And here we can just take the defaults. Now here, we need to tell Eclipse which class has the main method. And we can press Browse and it will show us any classes that contain a main method. In this case, we only have one choice, which is the My Library class. And we hit Finish. And now Eclipse has created our JAR file. Finally, we'll run mylibrary.jar outside of Eclipse. So I'm on Windows, so I'm going to open up Command Prompt. On Linux or Mac, you would open up your system console. First, we'll pull this down so we can see. We're going to change directory to the Eclipse directory. We're going to do dir star.jar just to make sure it's there. Then the command is java-jar mylibrary.jar. And we can see that it ran exactly the same output at the system console as it did inside Eclipse. Congratulations! This is the end of the tutorial. We've now seen how to create a Java program in Eclipse using test-driven development. If you followed along and understood the lessons, then you've got a great start with Java and Eclipse. The tutorial companion guide lists a number of additional learning resources. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you've learned a lot and had some fun. I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now.